my guest, Brian Lake, walks in uncommon favor. It's much like in the book of Esther, and interestingly enough, this month is the Jewish festival of Purim, and we read from the Megillah, the book of Esther, and in Esther, the queen had uncommon favor with the king. That was the first thing I think about in the book of Esther. The second thing I think about is that Esther had such a love for the Jewish people that because of her authority, because of the presence of God that was on her, she saved the Jewish people. My guest, Brian Lake, has got so much to be grateful for. You know, Brian, when I think about what God's done with you here, uh, you, you have, you're not a college graduate. No. Millionaires want to know your wisdom. They want, uh, you, you run a million dollar corporation and several other companies, uh, but the greatest treasure you have is your family. family. And uh, what do you really attribute this uncommon favor to? Uh, the, the favor in my life comes from the intimacy with God or the relationship that I've established with Him. Even as a young boy, when I was you know, 10, 12 years old, I would spend literally hours and hours just fellowshipping with Him, just in my prayer closet, you know, reading my Bible and listening to tapes and just listening to His voice. And where, where did this come from? How does a 10-year-old know to, to, I mean, I, I hate to tell you what age I was when I started doing that, but how does a 10-year-old understand You know, uh, uh, my uncle actually introduced me to, to the Lord. And, and he gave me a scripture that all things are possible to those who believe. And that was ingrained into me. And I established that in my life and I believed it. And through that and through the Word of God, I began to just read the Bible and understand it more. And he began to speak to me and just reveal things to me and talk to me like, like we're talking, a friend. And that's what it's supposed to be like, a friendship. Well, as a teenager, you made a real sacrifice because God, I assume, told you to. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me about that $500. Yeah, and, and I, I believe giving should be a lifestyle. And this wasn't just one time that I gave, but this was a key time that I gave in my life because I believe um, it's important to give, but to listen to His voice when He speaks to us to give because really God was setting me up. He was setting me up for a great blessing. And I gave that seed of $500. For me at that time, was a lot of money. And I sowed that seed, and I'm still seeing the harvest today from that seed years ago. I planted, um, I planted that seed, and from that I actually won an award. And as I, as I sowed that seed and seen that award, I, in business, things begin to happen. I was sitting at tables like this here, surrounded by multimillionaires in business. And I was just a young, young boy, and thinking to myself, why am I here? How am I here? But I knew it was the favor of God on my life and because I sowed that seed. And from this day forward, I've been working with corporations because of that seed. Do you still spend as much time with intimacy with God? Absolutely, because... But you're so busy now. You've got a family, you've got children, you've got uh, businesses. Well, everything that I do today is a result of being in that secret place, fellowshipping with Him you know, spending time so I can never leave that place. Uh, by the way, how much money do you make from ministry? I don't make any. Why? Because I'm a volunteer. Because it was my heart, my goal, to actually to establish other streams of income so I could go out and minister and not be influenced by money. So I'm, I'm a volunteer. My whole family is a volunteer in ministry. Do you believe everyone is supposed to spend that much time in intimacy with God, or are you just someone special that's called to do that? No, that's why we're created. We're created to fellowship with Him, to be in worship with Him, because it's in that place, when you're in that place, it's the, the favor of God comes on your life. Um, you know, I think the level of our, of our favor is linked to the level of our relationship with Him. And to give you an example, even with my children, they have favor with me. Because, you know, there's people that I, I know, but I, don't, I just know about them. But my children know me. So I can be in my office working, I can be on the phone, uh, in a meeting or whatever, my kids would come knock on the door and run in there. They have access to me because of the favor that we have. But if a stranger came to me and, and did the same thing, they wouldn't have that same access because of the favor. They don't have the same level of favor.
You, you talk about that in your book, mm -hmm. Romancing the King. Mm -hmm. I love the title, but I believe that it's more than even your teaching. I believe there is a presence of God to Absolutely. launch someone from someone that has such intimacy mm -hmm. to launch other people into intimacy with God. Are people telling you that that's the effect this book's having oh, on Oh, absolutely. And the message, that, that's me there. That's, that's what I was birthed into. And that book, is the purpose is to lead people into the presence of God, into a place that many people may have not been into before, into the deep you know, inner chambers of the King's Palace. Well, when we come back, I want Brian to tell you about the time the hand of God came to him that gave him the key for what is going on economically in the world today. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Brian Lake. And Brian, you had a very meaningful vision in which the hand of God came to you. Explain that to me. Well, what I seen in the vision was that I seen the hand of God actually go out over the people, you know, his, 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 the believers, it just went, his hand went over the people and began to release to all the people spiritual wealth, natural wealth, just the blessing of God was coming on his people. And, and I, in the vision, the people were so excited, and this was a multitude of people, just, a, just everybody so excited because of the, all the blessing, you know, the spiritual and the, the natural wealth. But what I see next was really changed my life because I seen his hand go back out over the people. And when he stuck his hand back out over the people, he, he did this. He actually began to motion for those people to come. And what happened was that not all the people started coming. Only a few, only a rare few began to come. They were so busy and preoccupied with the things all rather than the one that supplies the things. Yeah, absolutely. That's what was happening. All the people were content with all the stuff. And they were, they, you know, they were excited. but. It was, it was radically changing my life, what I was seeing in that vision, because I realized that he was calling us to intimacy, relationship. And the people that came to him and was um, wanting that relationship with him, their blessing began to, to expand even more. The blessings just kept flowing and flowing and flowing. But the people that did not come, and I believe that's where we're at right now, that people that aren't in a relationship with him, their blessing began to dry up. And it just, time after time, it just was drying up. It's really sad because if mm -hmm. you really understood, there is not a higher priority mm -mm. than intimacy with God. Now, you've had multiple visions of rooms. Explain. Yeah, I had a vision. It all started, I was in my office. I was on my typewriter typing, and my little dog was laying at my foot to the left side of me. And I was home alone, and I was typing. And all of a sudden, I felt this presence enter my room and even the dog on the floor noticed something and turned to look as I turned to look. Now I didn't see it in the natural but in the spirit uh, that was so profound so real to me I seen a man standing there in a white robe and throughout that week there was another encounter which um, later God was revealing to me that was the rooms of the heart. He was uh, showing me what people's hearts look like and I remember this room that I walked down it looked like a hotel room on each side there was doors, but this room was deteriorating. Uh, the, the floor was, you know, just really uh, weathered and just even the smells smelled like uh, musty and the walls were just, the paint was coming off dark colors. And, he, and the Lord led me down these hallways and looked in each one of these rooms. As we walked down these rooms, I remember looking in these rooms as he was showing me that in each one of these rooms, different ones, one of them was filled up with um, like entertainment. You know, there's TV sets in there. People were just consumed. Their life was consumed with entertainment. You know, watching TV and just ongoing. Went into another room, and there was a room there filled up with trophies. All these awards people won, and I noticed distinctly that there was one guy in there that was actually polishing these awards that he won. And I remember that guy turning to look at the door to see who opened he, this, this gentleman looked at Jesus and just kind of nodded and grinned and turned back around and went back to polishing his trophies, the awards that he won. But room after room, you know, there was party atmospheres and different things. But when we got to the end of the hallway, I remember so clearly that Jesus turned to me and looked at me with a tear running down his face. And he said, Brian, there's no room in this heart for me. 
And, you know, I, you know, I begin to weep and cry at that point because, you know, our life is so filled up with other things. And the Bible says, you know, one thing that I desire. So it was, it was radically changing my life by seeing that, and it made me evaluate my heart, what's in my heart. What, look on the camera and tell people what they have to do if you've just hit a nerve. In yeah, them. yeah, and I, I believe there's people out there right now that actually are listening, that you want that passion, you want your heart to be emptied out. And I believe this is the opportunity for you to empty that. You gotta give everything to Jesus because if you give your heart to Him, He has everything. So give your heart to Him and find that relationship with Him, that intimate relationship. He wants to be your friend. Do you know that uncommon favor that Brian walks in? You're going to see a demonstration of that and a demonstration of the miraculous when you meet his family. Every member of his family, every member moves in gifts of the Spirit, extraordinary words of knowledge, healing, uh, perfume comes uh, w when one of his children prays. It's the most amazing fa family. Guess what? You can have that type of family, too. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. I'm here with Brian and Pamela Lake, and when I say they are blessed, it doesn't matter what I say, it matters what you think. And I'm going to tell you something, as you get to know their family, uh, Brian, why did you decide that you'd have your whole family operate in the supernatural rather than you just go off and let them be homeschooled and like a lot of other people? Well, for one thing is that I want to be with my family and for me to leave my family behind, I just didn't want to do that. So it was easier for me to take my family with me and then train them up because it's my heart to train people up, equip people uh, into the ministry, into the giftings that God's called them into. Uh, Melanie, are you trying to help your dad with that microphone? How old are you? Four years old. Yeah. Well, Pamela, I'm, I'm very intrigued by your gift. You have an ability to put your hand on someone and feel their hurts. Do you, you know, when Jesus prayed for people, he had compassion. Tell me what goes on inside of you, or give me an exact case of someone you've prayed for. Yeah, I just, a lot of times I, even though on the outside they just seem like they're happier or whatever, and then whenever I lay hands on them, I can just feel their sadness or I can feel what they're feeling inside. And it's happened many, many times. And then I'll just pray for them, and then they'll just start feeling the presence of God, and they'll, they'll just get healed. They feel like it, they're melting all that stuff away. I, mean, I feel the presence of God just as you're speaking. Uh, and you know what? God just told me someone's neck was just healed and someone's back was just healed. And in the head area, there's, it's the sinuses are opening up. I, just as you were speaking, yeah. it was like the presence of God came out of you. Tell me one actual person you prayed for and what happened. Um, we actually went to New York not too long ago, and there was a lady, and she had a, a little little boy, and we actually prayed for. I actually prayed for him, and I could feel the the anoint. I mean, the presence. And whenever I prayed for him, he had failure to thrive and just I could feel the presence going into him and then whenever whenever that happened he just instantly got healed and the mom called me later on and the baby's like grown and he's 22 pounds and real chunky he's got big old legs and chunky cheeks and everything so God just healed him that's such a wonderful gift and uh, Jordan you amaze me. You just, you're almost like a machine gun with words of knowledge. How long has that been going on with you? As long as I can remember. Really? Like, how old were you when it started? Would you, can you remember? Like, what, uh, Brian, when he was two, did he do that? What do you think? Well, he was praying for people when he was two years old. He would run up and lay hands on people, and, you know, in the name of Jesus. And, and even, you know, when he was four years old, he was beginning to get words of knowledge. And Jordan, uh, you like to pray the fire of God on people. Uh, explain that to me. Well, pretty much um, they get touched, and whenever I say fire, um, people get delivered, people get set free, and pretty much just radically touched. 
the presence of God comes on them and their yeah. lives get changed. Well, I'll tell you what, rather than you describe it, let's see a clip of, of uh, Jordan praying for the fire of God. I just pray for the fire to be so strong in this place tonight. I command this place to be on fire for you tonight in the name of Jesus. I release the fire, fire, fire. And Molly, you move in gifts of healing. Tell me about that time that everyone could smell perfume when you prayed. Well, actually, I pray for a nice lady who had an ear problem, and she came back to me, and she said that she was healed, and then after I prayed for her, she could smell the aroma of God. It's, I, that, that's such an amazing thing to me. Uh, you work in what's called words of knowledge also. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at a clip of Molly praying for someone right now. I think God was telling me that you like to dance. I just see God like releasing it even more on you and he's gonna get you, get you to teach other people how to dance and I see you like going in ministry like t dancing and stuff. It's really awesome. Thank you. I'll just pray for you. Uh, Molly, how old are you? I'm 12 years old. And do you really enjoy praying for the sick? I enjoy it a lot. I, I, I think that's the strongest gift from what I understand that operates through you. Mm -hmm. Tell me one more person that was healed that you prayed for. Actually, one time this lady was battling cancer and after the meeting I prayed for her and stuff and about a couple of weeks later she called back and she said that she went to the doctors and she found out that she doesn't have no more cancer and she's totally healed. That is so wonderful. Jordan, can I put a demand on your gift? And can you look in the camera and pray for whatever God tells you right now? Right now, arthritis, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Asthma, be healed right now. Someone with a um, pain in their left shoulder, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Neck pain, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Back pain, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Molly, uh, has God shown you anything right now? Yeah. Actually, I see someone with um, a shoulder also that has like damaged or something in work and I just command healing over you Lord Jesus and I see someone with a head like I think you have a head damage in your and I just command complete healing and I see someone else with a tumor and we just command healing in Jesus name is God showing anyone else anything right now? Yeah, there's somebody that has cancer. I knew it was you. <laughs> there's a lady that has cancer. You've been battling this cancer for some time. And there's actually, I don't know if it's the same word Molly had, but there's lumps that you have that God is restoring. Even as we talk right now, those, those their lumps are dissolving right now in the name of Jesus. There's also somebody that has, their leg is actually shorter than the other, about a half an inch to an inch shorter. God's actually going to grow that leg out. Just stand up right now where you're at because it's growing right now. Have somebody check it right now. And everything you're watching right now comes out of one thing. Brian, what does it come out of? Intimacy with, with the Lord. Give me some nugget about intimacy with God. Sure. When we get born again, you know, it's more than just being born again. It's about the responsibility that comes with the relationship with Jesus. And just like with my wife, when I first met her and married her, you know, I, I didn't just marry her. It took years for me to get to know who she is, what she likes, what she doesn't like, you know, her favorite colors, their favorite foods, all those things. When we get born again and accept Jesus into our heart, we got to find out what the king likes. You know, what's his favorite color? You know, what's he loved to, you know, what grieves him, what makes him sad, what makes him happy. And you spend those years getting to know him out of that secret place, fellowshipping with him. You know, it's really interesting as, as either you or your wife speaks, the presence of God from intimacy with him just kind of pours out. And as it pours out, 
I hear that God is healing people. I hear that someone with a neck pain, if you'll just move your head just like that, do that right now, you'll see the pain is gone. Someone with a backache, if you'll just go like this, you'll see that pain is gone. And someone in your whole head area, there's the migraine is gone, Any anything that you need. It's, any members of the family hearing anything from God? I, I was just hearing like depression, that there's there's people out there that are suffering with depression, and I just command it to leave right now in Jesus' name, that depression to leave right now. And Molly, what are you hearing? I hear right now that someone either knocked their shoulder out of place, and we just command it to be healed in Jesus' name. And you know, this month is the Jewish festival of Purim, and in Purim we read from the book of Esther, the Megillah, and we find two main things. The first main thing that we find is extraordinary favor, uncommon favor, that Esther, who should not have any favor, she was uh, not supposed to be queen of the land, there was a whole rearrangement done, she has such favor with the king. And I, I believe, Brian, that you can pray for people to have favor with the king right now, and especially for their finances to mm -hmm. increase, would you? Sure, absolutely. Lord, we just release right now an uncommon favor over the people that's listening right now because I believe as the favor comes upon their life, it comes with an assignment. So it's just not favor just to be upon our life, but it's favor for the assignment on your life. And I believe as you get that favor, be grateful for it. I mean, it'll, it'll radically change your life, but be grateful for it. And you know the reason that Esther, Queen Esther, had so much favor? I don't know if you've ever realized this, but there's a promise in Genesis 12, 3. God says, I, God, will bless those who bless the Jewish people and curse those who curse them. So you know what happened to Haman? He cursed the Jewish people, he got hunk. And you know what happened to Esther? Esther blessed the Jewish people, and Esther had such favor, and as a matter of fact, it, when the Jewish people were equipped with the sword in the book of Esther, which is a type of the Word of God, revival broke out through the land. I believe Esther is a type of the end time Gentile church. And as Esther stands up for the Jewish people, not in their, her own strength, but in the strength of God, in the garments of God, I'm going to pray for you in a moment, a prayer that I've prayed for people all over the world. And I have to tell you, I'm a myself by the results of this prayer. It's such a simple prayer, but it touches the heart of the king. Because it touches the heart of king, the king, you know what uh, Mordecai told Esther? Esther, if you don't stand up for the Jewish people at this precise time in history when the world is trying to annihilate Israel, I will raise deliverance from another source. But Esther, church, who knows if you've not been called to the kingdom for such a time as this? This is a moment of destiny. And you're going to receive, just as when Pamela prays for someone, she receives the compassion of the Messiah, and she just transfers that compassion. You're going to receive the compassion of the Messiah for the Jewish people and the nation Israel when I pray for you right now. I call it the Esther anointing. I'm going to pray this for you. Get ready to receive. Be in a receiving mode. Do you know what a receiving mode is? If I was to toss a ball to you right now, a little beach ball, you better put your hands up or you get hit in the head. Well, I want you to catch something right now. It's in the spirit, though. It's not in the natural. Then I want, I want your family to catch this because I believe it's part of the DNA of your family. It's part of the DNA of Esther. In the name of Yeshua, I command the Esther anointing, the Esther anointing, the Esther anointing, the Esther anointing in the name of Yeshua. Now catch it right now. Catch it. Catch the Esther anointing. Catch God's heart for the Jewish people in Esther, Yeshua's name. Amen. <laughs> 